We are about to start. I, you know, I'm talking to my camera right now, but no, I'm not done with my rant. I was going into the spiel of what I'm going to do deal with today. You know, Terry doesn't even watch my own videos. Can you believe that? Are you done? Okay. You sure about that? All right. Today, well, we're going to do a lot of things. I got a lot of cleanup to do. It's going to be a lot of menial tasks. Yay. But I'm starting to look at the electrical system on the car and I've got two new fuse boxes coming. I've ordered them as well. I've got a mess over here in this right headlight and the left headlight and we're going to take a little walk around. I'm going to show you all the crazy electrical issues. All right, let's take a look over here. Oh, oh dropped them. Reaching down here. Careful, careful, careful. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is not original. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple relays here. I've got a couple fuses in here. And I really don't know what's going on there. I've got a replacement uh, bulb socket, uh, headlight socket there that's been, you know, it's kind of thrown together. Same thing on the other side, but not as bad. But maybe. Yeah, probably just as bad. Yeah. Hmm. So while I've got reasonable access here, and a little bit easier to get to, this is my clutch cable. Um, throttle cable is just over there a bit, but I've got two new cables. Nothing wrong with these ones, but you know what? Let's just change them up anyway since I've got them. Now before we get into the exciting action of changing cables, let's take a look at this master cylinder. Despite what I'm looking at here, which kind of looks like mud, but is actually probably congealed brake fluid, I'm still holding on to the dream that I may be able to rebuild this unit. After plugging all the ports very well, I threw it in the sandblast cabinet for a quick little blast, and now I've begun with disassembly. And look at here, there's everyone's favorite vice. I'm trying to do this without this thing going flying on me. A little bit of magic tappy tappy and it's going to fall right apart, right? Come apart, please. Come apart. I've read the disassembly instructions online and I don't think there's anything in the back end of this master that needs to come apart in order to get the push right out, but let's take a quick peek. And of course, a second set of eyes is always needed, and here's the man to do it. What about that? The bottom, the bottom, the bottom. Taking that off. Now you see here, flipping it over and banging it is a recognized technique. Here's the 40 plus year technician doing the exact same thing. All right, I'm gonna cut my losses on this master cylinder. I've already spent a couple hours on it. I let uh, some rust penetrant sit in, in it overnight. I did manage to get the outer uh, push rod out with the outer piston, but the inner one, the screw that's in there, it's not coming out. I'm tired of fighting with it. I think it's time to toss in the towel on this one and get a new part. As you've seen many times before, there's a never ending amount of cleaning. Both the brake pedal and the clutch pedal have these return springs. The clutch pedal spring was broken. I decided to replace them both. The brake pedal one went on easy peasy. The clutch one, not so much. Oh, that's, that spring's a lot stiffer. Hold this for 30 seconds. Well, the case? The case, yeah. I gotta go right there. Oh, 
Go for lunch. We'll do it after. Why don't you sit on it and get your butt right beside it? Can it hold our weight? Yeah, yeah, I can hold our weight. I got this one. Right. I'm going to get this up there. I'm trying to hook that into there. And I can get it up there, but I can't turn it in. Uh, Milton, yeah. stand here. Yeah. On the table, come on. Stand on the table. Hand, hand you. And I want you to put your foot on this right there. Keep waiting. All right, there's four of us right now. I'm yeah. sure there's a special tool for this, but I don't have it. Oh. This is obviously a situation for brute force and ignorance. There's also probably a joke here, like how many mechanics does it take to change a spring? Go ahead, I'm waiting. Give it your best shot. And you need muscles to do that. Okay, push, push it in more, Milton. Push it in, no, push it in towards me. Go. Push the bottom side. Yeah, push it down, Milton, so it goes flat. Yeah. Push, push hard. Yeah, you got that. Just lighten up. There you go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yay. Carrying on with the not so exciting tasks, I'm going to put the air horn and the pump back in after I give it a good cleaning and oiling. And the moment you've all been waiting for, I give you the clutch cable. Yeah, that was sarcasm. Hey, Pete. How you doing? Okay, how are you? Do you need me to come look at that car? Oh, it's all done? Oh, uh, yeah, you want to come and look at it? Okay, so let's talk about what's happening in this picture. Both the clutch cable and the throttle cable each run in one of these tubes. At the rear of the car is a pulley, a tiny little pulley that deflects the cable up towards the transmission. It's coming out too. Now while neither the cable or this pulley are technically bad, they both require attention. The cable I'm going to replace, the pulley I'm going to disassemble and free it up because it's dragging fairly heavily. At either end of the tube are two rubber grommets. I tried to get them out earlier, but they just don't feel like they want to come out. So I'm going to leave them in and do it a little bit harder way, but still get it done. I'm going to do an old mechanics trick here, which is to attach some mechanics wire to one end of the cable and pull the old cable out while pulling the mechanics wire in. Once the cable is completely removed, I will simply cut the mechanics wire, reattach the wire to the new cable, and then use the mechanics wire to pull the new cable back through the tube. Seems more complicated than it actually is. This is the little clutch pulley. I mean, it's kind of cute, isn't it? And if you've ever driven a 308, you know it has an incredibly heavy clutch. The new cable and freeing up this pulley should lighten the clutch. I mean, a little bit. It's not gonna change the world, but every little bit helps, right?
and I just need a quick helping hand from Terry to remove the rear cover so that I can access the throttle cable and repeat the process. Get out of my space. Get out of my space there, buddy. Now you gotta do like you do to me all the time. What you doing here, buddy? Huh? What you doing? You need, need some help? Just so you know, there have been many times that I have relied on this footage to help me remember to put something back together. And this was one of those times, because I took it apart, put it back together, took it apart, put it back together. Finally went upstairs, looked at the footage, I said, oh, I'm doing it wrong. Put it back together, put it back together, then finally got it done. I am temporarily putting this back together because eventually I'm going to have to come back in here to do the carpet, but these parts are better on the car than off, so I don't have to worry about losing them. So I was all set to start diving into this little corner of the underhood area, which is the pedal box plus the venting systems. And then I said, oh yeah, I forgot about something. I forgot about this hose. This is the brake booster hose that comes from the rear of the car. So if you watched the earlier videos, I discussed this hose, how it's joined right there. And I'm like, hmm, why is that hose joined right there? And I didn't think about it as any car of this age and vintage it presents hurdles and hurdles don't even bother me anymore i figured this was going to be a minor hurdle that's probably a bit more of a hurdle than i originally thought you see that hose runs in the fender well down through there in the channel that runs through the driver's side of the car and then pops out right there it's long here but it's short here so the channel jogs right about there in the car so it comes in goes up and then goes along and the hose is stuck right there well, probably right about there and it will not move you'll have to figure out a way to make it move 
I'm fairly certain it's the incorrect hose. It's just too rigid and has no flexibility to go around a corner. One more thing before I go, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Heidi and Franny's Garage. Franny gave me a huge shout out on her last video. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. And if you live under a rock and you've never seen Heidi and Franny's Garage, well, I'll put the link below and you can check them out because they have some awesome stuff going on in that garage. Bye.